guys, Anthony Jones with Brigade Boats, and in today's video, I'm going to give you a full walkthrough of this customer build that is going out the door. This is a Bass Tracker Pro Team 165. I did a lot of fabrication on this boat, and uh, it turned out beautiful, guys. So stick around. I'm going to give you a full walkthrough showing you the end result of everything that I did on this boat. If you want to see the full build process of this boat showing all the fabrication that went into it from start to finish, I've got a video on that, so check that out. Now this video, we're just going to walk through the final result. So if you want to see just how it turned out, then this video is for you. Let's get started. The front deck on this particular boat was half inch plywood. It came that way factory and this hatch here actually sat to the edge here so you would lift up the hatch and it would flip up like this but what i did was completely re redesign and reframe the front deck i moved this factory hatch back to create a reveal i recessed it into the sheet aluminum we went back with 090 sheet aluminum and um all new angled framing um inch and a half by inch and a half 1 16th riveted everything together and then i dropped in two of Nate's Custom Boats and Accessories dry hatches. But again, I retained the factory hatch, but I just moved it back a couple of inches. So we'll start here and I'll show you kind of what I did. I framed in a recess to give it um, a look to match the other two hatches. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Now this hatch originally in the boat um, went all under here, but we wanted to add a hatch up here and a divider. So that's what we did. Now in here, of course, all new carpet, recessed framing, sheet aluminum deck. We carpeted in the floor. You'll see a little um, channel over there and I'll explain to you what that is in this hatch. Now this is one of Nate's custom boats and accessories dry hatches. I get these from tinyboatnation.net. I'll leave the link down in the description. These things are awesome. So if you're doing a project yourself, I strongly recommend using these, especially if you're going aluminum. He makes them for carpeting or for hydro turf or sea deck applications. Of course, they come with the hinges. You drill your own hole, mount your latch, and it's got the track inside to allow for water to channel. Um, it's a dry hatch, water channels there, and then it runs underneath through that hose. The hose actually goes through that channel that I created inside of this hatch and then down and into the deck. And of course, there's a factory water drainage in this deck to direct everything back to the rear end of the boat. Um, in here, all I did was carpet. And of course, you've got that divider. And let's take a look at that hatch. This area in the factory setup was just solid wood with foam underneath it. I was able to gut a majority of the foam and then create another storage space in here that you could make of use um, again the dry hatch on this tube it runs down and around and behind this panel and there is a low spot on each side of the boat for water to direct to the back of the boat so again we added a hatch there a hatch there a divider we're able to retain the seat pedestal um, drop the factory hatch down and inset it into custom framing and then of course um, redeck and recarpet everything recarpeted the tray up front I added, this was from the throttle control area on the side. I moved that up front so his trolling motor cable can come out there. Um, it turned out really nice. Let's work our way to the back of the boat. I'll walk back around and I'll show you the rod locker. The only thing that I did to this was I changed the way the factory carpets it. The factory actually carpets over the hinges and then you just have a sliver um, of, of hinge and carpet here. I mean, it's if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. It's hard to explain. What I did was I carpeted the side panels first, mounted them in the boat, and then came back and carpeted over the hinge, riveted the hinge down to the aluminum side panel, and then, and then it all looks seamless. Um, very, very clean. Another thing I'll quickly note, all the hinges in this boat that were factory hinges, like this hinge, this hinge, and these in the back, all of those hinges were stripped and all the glue was removed and then they were sanded with 220 grit to give them a nice smooth new like finish so i'm really happy with how that came out i used um rivets on all of the um all of the pull latches all the finger pulls um to kind of make that pop and match how the hinges look i kind of like that contrast and honestly kind of matches the factory um boat hull 
So inside, it turned out super, super clean. We carpeted everything inside, so it's all new carpet on the side panels, all new carpet inside. Heck, I even got down inside of the rod locker because I had the front deck off and was able to get in there. All new floor system in this boat. Now, it was originally half inch plywood, and again, we went, we went in with the 090. Um, aluminum floor, riveted everything down, sanded all the rivets smooth, and then did the carpet. Um, all the carpet in this boat is 20 ounce bass boat carpet. It's available on tinyboatnation.net, and uh, this color is gunmetal. That side panel was just rewrapped. This side panel was a lot different. There was a huge opening right in here. Um, it was a big opening where the throttle controls were. And originally this boat had a steering console in it. Now, when the customer got this boat, he sold the outboard that was on it. He gutted the steering console and removed all the throttle controls and sold those as well to convert this boat into an electric only tournament boat. Does electric only reservoir fishing here in the state of Georgia. And I was able to fabricate new framing underneath this panel and then fill this in with sheet aluminum and then feather it in with some fiberglass strand reinforced filler and uh, just feather it in and then carpet it. And it, it looks to me really, really nice. I think it turned out great. Um, was able to plug some electronics in over here. Got the live well timer. I'll get to that later. I did do some work on the live well. Um, let's look at the jump seat area and the electronics inside, and then we will get to the back deck. One of the things I really, really like about this boat is how we changed from having the steering console and removing the throttle controls and going to the electric side of things. We were able to remove the bass seats that were originally in this boat and use this as a step up to the rear deck, but also create some storage area. This jump seat was actually a flip up from the factory. That side was not, and I actually had to modify that hatch um, to make that work. But in here, it's just uh, super, super clean, um, recarpeted inside. Of course, he's got his pole lights in here and his front nav light. Um, I did reinforce the factory lid with some framing to stiffen it up since it'll be stepped on constantly now with no seats. Um, filled in where the original seat mounts were and then of course added the, the, uh, the finger pull latches. Here we have the other side and um, did the same thing over here as far as filling in the, the holes for the factory seat, adding some framing to kind of reinforce that, make it a little bit more stable to walk on. And then this is my favorite part, the electronics end of things. Um, I added a gang switch panel underneath, as you can see. So right now he's got four spares and he's got four accessories wired in on the left. Of course, he's got his other, um, his live well, recirc, and then his other accessories here. Now, what I did was I wired in an extra USB port here. You can see that. And so he could actually put a phone or GoPros or whatever he wants underneath this and keep it out of the sun in a nice dry, dry area and uh, charge it during the day when he's out on the water. And I rewired 75% of this boat. I took the good positive and negative existing leads um, that went to the throttle control area where the console originally was, extended them, um, replaced wiring that needed to be replaced that was old or had a lot of splices in it, um, ran all new duplex, um, 14 gauge, uh, marine grade, anchor marine, and then fed everything into a fuse box a majority of these parts I got on Amazon. I could leave the links down in the description if you're interested in knowing exactly what I used. We did wire in eight gauge coming from the battery in the back, his accessory battery. So all new wiring, all your connectors are heat shrink wrapped or coated in dielectric grease anywhere there's any kind of quick connects. Um, turned out really nice. Added this little shroud in case water were to get in so it's not dripping right there on the switch panel. Um, just kind of making this area work. Um, as a good place to put this. Again, this area was not accessible originally. This lid was actually screwed down. It had a lip on both sides, about an inch lip, and it was screwed down permanently and carpeted over. So this was something we kind of created from nothing, and I think it turned out really nicely. 
And onto the back deck, retain the seat pedestal in the middle. And then all the uh, rear deck factory was aluminum. So it was just simply removing all the carpet, removing all the adhesive, cleaning everything real good, and then doing the carpet job. Um, I was able to, in my opinion, do a really nice job. Everything's cut in really, really nicely around the edges and tucked around the sides really, really nicely. I was able to get these up and get carpet under there. Um, just try to make it as nice as I could. and. Uh, uh, give it that factory look and I feel that I've attained that um, with this job this is the live well um, it's a factory live well what I did in here was add a flow right pump in pump out aerator combo and I'll show you that in the back and then I added a um, Atwood tsunami 500 gallon per hour pump to recirculate the water this particular live well doesn't come with a factory recirculation it's just a simply fill and drain system so we added that to give this uh, customer a lot more performance out on the water for his tournament fishing and then we added the variable live well timer which actually controls that pump and gives him full run cycle um, he's got one minute on one minute off i believe one minute on three minutes off and one minute on seven minutes off and then just your standard off obviously so it turned out really nice i think he's gonna be really pleased with that back here um, again carpeted the lid um, beyond that just did a nice job of getting the carpet around the edges and tucked um, just like it was from the factory but what was cool was adding that pump had to cut the sheet aluminum to give myself access originally i was going to put the flow right right above it but due to the water level um, i feared there would be cavitation so i moved it over more towards the center you'll see that flow right valve there so what that does is it actually can recirculate the water back through the valve and when you pull it on the inside um, it activates that second one and so instead of sending it as a recirc it sends it up and back through and then around and what i did was i routed this hose as you can see and it comes up and then out and through the transom and that is his pump out for his live well um, pretty neat guys turned out nice and again i think he's going to get a lot of use out of it on the water that's it that's pretty much the walkthrough of everything that was done i'm sure there's some small details here or there that i've left out um, on this project um, overall scope of work again replacing the front deck from wood to aluminum recessing the uh, factory lid adding two of nate's custom boats and accessories dry hatches and a divider retaining the original seat pedestal in the front and the back swapping out the floor from half inch ply to the sheet aluminum retaining the factory rod locker and side panels um, custom fabbing out this side panel uh, eliminating the throttle control area um, removing the seats and adding the jump seats as a step up reinforcing them adding full electronics and wiring everything in fused with proper wiring um, and then the back deck as far as getting it back um, to above factory standards in my opinion and then upgrading the live well with the variable live well timer the flow right uh, aerator combo nozzle and then the atwood recirc pump so a lot of work went into this boat guys i think it turned out beautiful i'd love to know your opinion and i think moving forward what i'm going to do is do a video concerning the fabrication in and the build process kind of an overview of everything that went into it and then also do a video like this showing you kind of the end result um, and just simply a walkthrough of, of how the boat turned out. Hope you've enjoyed it, guys. Love to hear your comments. And uh, I'll keep you posted on future projects. And if you've got a project that you're interested in talking to me about, um, reach out to me. My email is going to be down in the video description. Um, it's brigadeboats at gmail.com. Um, I'm just outside of Athens, Georgia, and I'm actually taking boats from all over the country. And I've got more coming after this one, guys. So I can't wait to share with you these future projects. A couple of them I'm really, really excited about. They're going to be pretty awesome. Thanks again, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, let me know what you think about this project.